Hello, welcome back to Gary Keep It Simple. Today got one on bias. Bias is used in cassette decks and it's also used in normal reel to reels and other magnetic media. So let's get into it. I've got some stuff you're going to want to see. I'm going to have a little bit of a chat about it. And at the end of the day, you will not have a head that's trying to explode, but you will have a good understanding of how bias works, and what it's needed for. Right, so bias. If you've got a reel-to-reel -reel or a vintage cassette deck like this one, or a nice reel-to-reel -reel like that one, or another cassette, when that is exactly the same as that one, you know they, they, they are the same. Anyway, or this very expensive one, or this old one, or this brand new one, whatever it is, you're going to have bias. Bias. What is meant by bias? Well, actually, it's more properly known as recording bias. And it doesn't mean what sort of music you like. We'll get on to it now. Tape bias. From Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia. I originally read this out, but word for word, straight from the Wikipedia, so, and, you know, it was quite, quite involved. Anyway, let's see how we get on now. The less than the tape's cursivity, lots more big words. I've cut most of this out now, so we can carry on now from here. Transfer function. Put that into simple words. If you haven't got enough oomph, you're not going to get the thing to go onto the tape. And so they add the oomph in the way of bias. DC bias is like hitting it with a sledgehammer. In the example we got, patting it down with a spade. Whereas AC bias is like tickling it in a way that you want it to be tickled. If you look at this, you can see that the signal's there and it's not managing to get it off the bottom line. We want to get it to where this, the other two lines are. So this is what it would look like with only the top of the signal being recorded. So what we do is we raise it to be in that part of the tape spectrum. The coercivity is right. We don't want it to be too high. We don't want it to be too low. We want it to be nicely in the middle where it's linear. As we said, we could just jack it up with DC. But the trouble with DC is it's just one lump of something. It's hard to visualise it. So let me show you something that is not the same, but has the same sort of effects. You've all seen one of these people. And what he does is he goes around and he pushes the sand in the right way but he's got a machine that's vibrating and then the vibrations make it nestle into the gaps you look at this and you think oh what's this then this is how they deal with powders trying to get them into small spaces trying to get them to mold trying to get them to do what they want them to do you can think of the tape as being in the same situation by hitting it with a vibrating signal which is the AC bias you can get the tape to do what you want it to do nice neat and small in effect it becomes malleable and takes the mould that you're giving it. So the fidelity is superb. That started at just under 4 litres and it's ended up with just over 2.5 litres. Purely by a bit of vibration of gravity. Which is the same sort of effect that you'd expect with bias on the tape is the addition of the two forces which give you the results which in this case is a nice smooth pot of powder and in our case would be a really good sounding tape you will have heard of high bias and standard bias and metal bias they're all different levels which are specific to the type of tape being used if you've got a type 2 tape you do not bias it the same as a type 1 tape most tapes are manufactured to a standard and so are around right about the same for each type, but you can, on posh machines, get controls which are actually there to allow you to fine-tune it. So, and on other machines, you could get really posh. You can start setting the levels to be so that they exactly match what you record is what you get off to be able to custom tune the tape to the machine. These things are very nice. They're not necessary, and it depends on what sort of machine you've got. However, if you've got the right tape for the right machine, it doesn't matter whether there's knobs on it or not, because if it's set to that tape, it will be giving you the best it can do. Most of the tapes are mostly right most of the time. What you have to do is go and try the odd different one to, if you're not happy with what you get on one tape. If, for instance, you're trying to use a Bassif Chrome on a Japanese deck, you may find it's not so good. In which case, get yourself a TDK Chrome you'll probably find that works better. When I say better, I don't mean that the tape itself is better, I just mean that the sound will be better, because the tape has to be set for the machine, and the machine has to be set for the tape. 
The little diagram in the middle there shows you the correlation between bias level and response of the tape. If you apply more bias, then you'll get better low frequency response, but you'll lose the treble. If you take the, tr the bias down, you'll lose, you'll gain some treble, but you'll lose the bass. It's a case of getting it in the right place so that you get the best of both worlds. One of the things you hear people say, which is really confusing, because it's actually wrong, is you've got to give it some negative bias, or you've got to give it whatever. You can't give it negative bias. Bias is a level. You've got less level and more level. And it's marked on those knobs as being minus 20 and plus 20. But you're not giving it negative bias. What you're doing is taking the bias away by the amount of decibels, which is a, just a number, that it says on there. Don't get confused. Don't worry about it. Just set it to what it should be, and you're fine. I want to show you this. This is real world. This is a tape, a brand new tape. I'm going to get it out, and I'm going to put it into my deck and I'm going to fiddle with the bias control and ex explain to you what's happening so you can see really what's what. Brand new tape, new old stuff I would guess. Flip right. tape. So, brand new Brilliant tape. Quality. Okie dokie, put it into there. Now set the frequency up. I'm going to use 150 hertz on one channel and I'm going to use 7 kilohertz on the other channel. One is bass, hum, and the other is treble. Eee. Enough. Right, as you can see, they're both set to be exactly the same level, which is 0 dB. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the knob a bit, and a bit, and a bit, and a bit, after I put it into record mode. There we go. So that's on total negative bias. And then I'm going to turn it up, and then turn it up, and then turn it up, and turn it up. And when you play it back, you will see the results. It's quite interesting. This is a handy way of setting up your machine if you're one of the ones that's got a machine without I'm codes, to as I have. And I've got a proper video on this, you could follow it all the way through. Replay. Anyway, that's how it works on there. So let's just have a quick look at the playback. Should be playback any second now. Two, one, go. Right, so there we have it on full negative bias. And we've got the bottom signal is a bit bigger than there now it's level. stepped, and it's about equal. And now, let's see what happens. There'll be another step. No, oh, and the top high. channel is getting a bit higher. So and there we go. So it's I can more and it's even more. And now, what's actually happening is the bottom channel is getting less. So not only is the top one getting stronger, the bottom one's getting weaker. And that's the effect of bias on a tape in the real world. So what you have to do is set it to where it was the best, which was equal. Which was nine on the counter. I could now just play you lots of bits of music and twiddle the knob and say, look at the difference on there and that. But you wouldn't actually get any benefit because A, I don't know what you're listening to it on and B, you don't know what it's meant to sound like anyway. So at the end of the day, you wouldn't actually hear anything necessarily any better. If you've got the ability to adjust it, then just do so. And if you do it properly, you know it's right because you've seen it on the display. I hope you found some use out of that video. If you did, maybe you'd like to push on the button and subscribe or whatever. There's some videos popping up now click on one of them, it might take you to something that's even more relevant for you. Thank you very much, catch you another time. Let me know if there's any videos you'd like to see, put them in the comments. Thank you, bye bye.